Hello everybody, this is Classic David with yet another podcast and this time um, we are doing it a little bit sooner than we thought we will. Hello Curtis. Hi David. We've just decided that, the, you know, there is so much happening at the moment around the world that it's actually worth to to do it like after a week and like three days because the last podcast was uh, on Friday. Uh, Friday the 6th, yep. So 10 days, 10 days ago. So uh, as you all know, a lot have happened <laughs> over the 10 days. Like, oh my God, some of the, I really feel for the Luna holders. I do feel for them a lot, actually. Right. Do you know anybody who lost? Uh, I don't know, not, no, no one personally. Um, because I do. <laughs> oh yeah, they, mm-hmm. were they? too much that were they a hundred percent Luna or no 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 just a small position but still hurts like yeah well we were talking about the Howie test uh 10 days ago and the Uh Howie test tries to protect people from this right it's supposed to (laughs) well it yeah so the timing was was pretty good on that right um yeah so uh yeah let's start with the usual stuff and I'm sure it will progress Oh, well, so Bitcoin. So you go first. (laughs) Tell us. Okay, so yeah, the Bitcoin uh, discussion sort of fits into my other talk later. But to start, Mm -hmm. obviously, we're at about 30,000. It dropped down to 25. Um, Last week was a horrible week for stocks. And it seemed to knock on exactly with with crypto and Bitcoin. Everything sold off. And then, of course, the Terra Luna um, crash doubled down. Uh, Was an extra bad event in crypto specifically. Um, So uh, this week is a really big week. Um, The stock market opens in uh, about uh, six or seven hours in the US. And uh, Friday was a rally day. Friday, the stocks did well. Uh, You can see Bitcoin has performed well since then. And if we have a good day in stocks, it looks like Bitcoin probably will have a bounce the fact that we've you know sort of very very short term maybe bottomed at 25 plus uh, a recovering mm-hmm. stock market might see uh bitcoin and crypto jump today mm-hmm. um, but that's very short term it could turn over immediately um mm-hmm. so um in terms of my what i'm thinking so no. i have a hodl position that's most of my 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 bitcoin and i do have a trading position with my mm-hmm. trading position um, I'm thinking of taking a bit off the table around the 33 to 35 range if we get there. Mm-hmm. So if we do get a bounce um, around 33 or 35, I might mm-hmm. park a bit uh, with the idea that, that there is some downside risk. Okay. Um, I don't really have a technical view on that other than we're, we are quite oversold, right? We had about seven seven weeks of red. Yeah. When you look at late weekly, Yes, that's yes. pretty. I think it was seven weeks. That's very yeah, unusual, yeah. right? It's very unusual, and stocks are the same. So you know, the we definitely were oversold or in the very short term. So um, good chance of at least a, a modest bounce. Um, getting above, really I've heard the the bulls are saying if we get over forty thousand, there's a chance that you could have a bull market recovery. But I don't think we're going to get there right now. And it seems the bears have have control. Yeah, so uh, we drew this line and the circle. So yeah, your line got just smashed. And uh, the circle, even my circle, like we closed like two two dailies below my circle anyway. Right. So yeah, I think I can delete my circle because I think (laughs) it's getting invalid. We closed below that. Is that circle representing your 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 um, all time low for this bear market? Is that what you mean by that, or just very uh, short? This or just our overview, like uh, like one podcast or two podcasts ago. I think right. it was still in uh, in April. Uh, we talked about that. What we what do we think that the Bitcoin is gonna go? And that's how we drew. You know, you drew your right. uh, You know, uh, you gave this uh, yellow line. I gave this circle. The circle right. was somehow respected because as you can see, there was one close, close and another right. close like two days ago on the bottom part. Right. But these two closers below, it confirms that my circle is lost. So right. it is lost. Right. 
I'm going to delete this. Again, that line was uh, basically, I was just saying that that's the bottom according to that trend, right? Mm -hmm. And some support. Yeah. Um, and I just clarified to your listeners, I'm not, I'm not making um, specific predictions in the sense of trying to tell people what to do. Um, yeah, I think, me neither. I think the value of what I can bring is just perspective on what's happening and let people make their own decisions on that. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and I'm not, I'm not someone that's trying to tell people where the price is going to go in, in the short term. Right. Um, I'm bullish I'm on the macro level for many reasons. I can argue that. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can look at things like on-chain data, but uh, um, you know, um, it's not, I'm not trying to predict, I'm giving people uh, information to make their own decisions. Okay. Another thing yeah. uh, important to notice is that we should be watching USD contract, not USDT contract, because if you know, if you noticed, USDT contract was only 26.5K, but USD contract was 25.4K because there was a very brief slight depegging of the USDT as we were going down. So that's, I was even panicking as well when I saw it the tether. as we were dropping. Yeah. And I saw, I, I just saw my secondary yeah. monitor that the price is different in USDT and it, uh, by a lot, by a thousand dollars. And I knew something was wrong. So I we went to 0.98. Yeah. It went, I think USDT went to 0.98 or 0.96 or something. Yeah. 0.93. Oh, really? Wow. I missed yeah, that. Yeah, that's like, what I'm missed, saying yeah. that it was yeah. by a lot. So. Right. Oh, wow. I didn't of, know it went that low. Yeah. Of course, this brief, the pegging of the USDTs, I'm going to have a look at USDT. The very brief, the peggings, if you look like for the past, like, okay, let's, let's put a maximum here. Like we had some brief, the peggings, you know, one way or another, like 2017, 2018, right. there was something happening as well here during the Corona times. There right. was, but it was not like, this was pretty like uh, it was a lot like 0 0.93 USDT that hasn't right. happened for years hasn't right. happened for years okay yeah it happened in the far past but well far 2018 it happened yeah in 2017 okay. it happened so it right. was given the market cap it was really really worrying uh, and but still like there is lots of money it's very liquid so on the yeah. other hand, everybody knows it's not properly covered. That's like everybody knows by now. It's covered like to, to an extent of 60%, maybe. Who knows? So if like uh, like everybody exits in the same day, it would collapse. So like there is no guarantee at the talking moment. Talking about Tether. We're talking about Tether. Although now even I was shorting it, actually. <laughs> I started shorting it, but then I closed all my shorts because I realized that people started looking into this and shorting. And that's not where the crash actually happens. UST crashed, as you know, uh, you, uh, Terra, UST crashed. Right. right. And before it crashed, there were very few people shorting in. There was very few people shorting in. And because UST crashed, now lots of people are going to short lots of stable coins thinking that they can make, you know, like 50% just with almost zero risk. I think they're, they'll be mistaken. I think. I think, I think the risk is gone right now. Yeah, it, I think it, it may no happen again, but I think now there's no there's no action there. Yeah, I think that UST and USDC, all the centralized stablecoins will crash when the governments will just uh, will will want to like attack crypto completely by brute force. Uh, so I think before that, I don't think it's going to crash like right now. So I closed all my shorts, but we were talking about Bitcoin. Yeah, so uh, I, I made like five updates, so I said like most of it, but uh, I'm just going to remind everybody that uh, I had a technical mentor. Uh, his name was Alex, and he was always the last year because he was bearish uh, the second half of the last year. And nobody listened to him. <laughs> that's what I loved about him. Uh, and that's why I love to, you know, to, to be uh, in contact with him. And, and he was always saying that once we sweep the summer low, summer low, he meant 28k yeah once we sweep it that we're gonna go down and we're gonna go down deep and we swept it so if his work is any worth uh, is any worth then we actually are gonna see uh, uh well lower prices uh, in a reasonably short future also the gonna leverage lower. Lower. Said gonna, yeah. yeah yeah if his worth is any worth <laughs> uh, and 
I I honestly believe. I wonder if he's short. Is he betting a lot of money short? Otherwise, it's hard to. I mean, again, it, it needs to be a combination of of your theory and actually putting bets on the table. Yeah, th this is all his. Because otherwise, there's no penalty for being wrong, right? If I say it's yeah. going to five thousand, that's and I'm right. Okay, that's a great call, but I didn't put I didn't put any risk on that, so it's almost like I got lucky, right? Whereas if I actually made the bet ostensibly i actually put something behind it does that make sense to you it does make sense to me and yeah his calls he usually stood but his actions uh, like he usually put his actions where his mouth was i'm right. not in contact with him for like uh, nine months now unfortunately he just uh, because he stopped working for the company um, well it's it doesn't matter i don't okay. know what he's doing today these are the calls okay from him from the last second half of the last year so <laughs> but yeah. the funny thing is that i think some of them are coming true and will come true and uh, i think so as well because nobody listened to him because nobody liked his calls much that was all very bullish to see uh so also that's why i think that the providence will make his calls come true uh -huh. and this was just one of them another is concerning bitcoin dominance but let's not talk about it today so I think we've covered Bitcoin too much. <laughs> well, what is <laughs> your prediction? I, what does your blue circle mean? Oh, good question. Great. Thank you. <laughs> because blue circle is area where at the moment people are betting that it's going to go. And uh -huh. I, I'm saying that it's not going to go there. That's why so I will make this circle. In the very short term, like the next two weeks, do you have yeah, a prediction? Yeah, that the rebound. Going is it going to bounce a bit, do you think? Uh... I think it's not going to bounce to this circle or above. That's what I think. Uh, but would it go to 33, do you think? Mm, it depends on the stocks. We will have a look at the stocks in a brief moment. I think okay. it can. I think it can because there was lots of liquidity still. And the fact that we actually were able to come back from 25.4K, we were come, we were able to come back and close even above 28. And we never closed daily below 28. That shows that there was some purchasing power that showed up. A lot of volume. Have you seen the volume? Uh, it was not that much as people say, by the way. Well, yeah, look at it. This is the USDT volume on Binance. But look at how, when's the last time it was that it, high? Yeah, if you see it weekly, like even the last May, it was higher. Right. The volume was higher last May. Even, well, there's more, more people volume. in the market then, weren't they? There was more. Oh, last was... May, the price went from 46K to, to 30 in one week. Yeah, that's where all the retail Similarly, got. there could be some. Yeah, I think there should be some bounce, to be honest. Yeah. But I'm not sure about it's going to go as high as people think. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm not sure about it. Um, so, yeah, that would be about Bitcoin. Uh, let's have a look at Ethereum. Ethereum uh, is holding still pretty strong given the fact that bitcoin dominance spiked ethereum was on 1800 which was the summer lows i think but yeah ethereum is still holding the summer lows as some of the altcoins as well including laxo so yeah <laughs> ethereum on bitcoin contract has not gone yet it was a significant downside but not as much if you look to the perspective it's still very strong versus bitcoin to be honest when it drops to the blue line then we're gonna say that that it's now lost versus bitcoin and maybe it's gonna go down even further yeah <clears throat> but still overall trend at the moment is still bullish versus bitcoin for ethereum i think that trend could be maintained because of the releases that are incoming, you, you start with the stocks. <laughs> I, I'm sure well, you, you see that last week um, was still a down week, even though we had a recovery on Friday, right? So for the whole week, it was still down, right? But Friday was a, st a strong recovery. And then, um, you know, today we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, At so the moment, we... it looks like it was to open a lower because the futures, the S&P 500 futures at the moment stand maybe but it usually yeah. the first yeah and then they rally later in the afternoon we'll see okay fair enough. Um, yeah um so the thing is there's not that much information so we had the april uh inflation rate it was 8.1 we already know that so we don't get an update for another month right 
So that we're not getting a much new information this week. Um, there's no Fed meetings. There's no inflation print. Um, there are earnings this week. So there's retail uh, consumer earnings like Costco and Walmart. And mm -hmm. what I've heard is that's quite important. Um, if they have good results, basically, if they say, you know, the average person is going out at, to Costco and spending money for their kids mm -hmm. and having barbecues and buying a lot of food and products, then that's probably bullish um, because it shows that uh, the economy has some strength to it. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, those companies, Walmart and Costco, report bad earnings, quarterly earnings, um, you'll have stocks likely sell off again because it shows that maybe the economy, like the core economy is getting hit, right? You know, you can talk about stocks going up and down, and that's important for rich people that have stocks. But for your average person, they're concerned about their job and whether they have enough you know, money to pay the rent, right? And if they have extra money, they'll spend it. So the core strength of the economy, um, we're not in a recession yet. And so this, in terms of this week, I think Tuesday, Wednesday, you're getting earnings from those uh, consu what, consumer staples companies. And, and from, from what I've heard, that, that's maybe the most important data this week. Other than that, you don't have data. Now, that could be bullish, right? If there's no, if there's no bad data this week, maybe yeah. stocks just naturally bounce just on impulse, right? Again, very short term. Um, maybe no news is good news, if that makes sense, right? Um, but yes. overall, it's a relatively quiet week, at least as, as, as far as we know, unless another stable coin blows up. There was positive <laughs> import and export data, price data. To my there was? Uh, I've just gotten the information, yeah, from... Uh, uh, meaning from low, low, low inflation on that? And the inflation in Germany and France stayed the same. And okay. even inflation for this week should be unchanged as well. Okay, okay. And it was only slightly worse than the US, than for So, I mean, most people would say we should get a bounce this week, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I completely agree at the moment. Also, when you look at the weekly candle, this is pretty yeah. bullishly looking candle because, yeah. you know, I'm not sure if people realize that, but the red candle that has a long tail means that there was a lot of purchasing power showing up. Yeah, if it and closes if in the top third of the length of the candle, it's good, right? And that's, that's as well. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the inversely, green candle that has a long tail up, that's also, that's a bad news inversely. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, so even that would suggest, although we had a like look at the corona crash on 9th of march we had a candle that also looked pretty bullish but yet you know the following week yeah was yeah more disastrous so it's like no guarantee if but you notice look at that corona crash how long was it four weeks three weeks only only four, three four, four. And yeah, exactly four. four and we have we've had how many weeks down with the nasdaq one two three four five six so we've this had yeah s p 500 right now oh, okay Okay, but anyways, S and P five hundred. Okay, so we had four weeks during Corona, and we've had six weeks during this. Um, now, remember, in in during COVID, uh, the Fed was supporting the markets. It was still very loose with with monetary policy. Now, the Fed is the enemy of the stock market, at least in the short term, because they're tightening rates. Yeah. And so, you could argue it's a very different scenario now than it was with COVID. Um, but COVID was very, very scary and no one knew what's going to happen. So, um, you know, th there's some, there's some, uh, comparison in terms of this, how, how frightening it was to now. Um, uh, also I would like to add, you said that we are not in global recession, but I disagree with this. I think we are. I think I was referring to the U S global recession so the yeah, whole I, I world is in a the, recession the, okay i don't think the us is in a recession we did have a gdp dip it fell by 1.4% but mm -hmm. that does not technically put us in a recession if is not like maybe not confirmed recession yet but i think the market is now pricing in at least the fear of the that global could be recession the oh absolutely there's absolutely so risk it doesn't yeah. mean that it has to wait for the data it can price in just the fear from oh, yeah. the bad data. Oh, the stock so. market is is for the stock market and the economy are separate things, right?
and mm-hmm. and stock market is yeah. forward looking so absolutely forward the stock market so, sell off so, but also david also david the stock market will recover before we get out of the recession does that make sense uh-huh. so uh, yeah, um, it does. stocks are selling right. off now because they're pricing in a recession but yes, within three yes. to six months stocks could be bouncing even though we are now in the recession so it's always forward looking and I, so I that's absolutely yeah. agree. that's a very um, good point that's uh yeah. i'm gonna write this down in my whiteboard in the room i have a whiteboard physical whiteboard in my room and where i write down some key information that i want to have always on you know in front of my eyes every time when i look on the wall I'm going yeah. to write this. I'm going to put yeah, I mean, double dot. He said this. Uh, <laughs> no, but right. And so it's the same with, um, so the stocks are selling off. Why are they selling off? Because the Fed said they're going to raise 10 times this year. Okay. Right okay. now, if, if that doesn't come true, stocks will bounce because they've already priced in this very bearish view of what the Fed's going to do. That's also true. That's because they're looking true. ahead, right? That's why those Fed meetings are so important. And you see the reaction on the day because it's projecting out the, the future path or trajectory of what's happening so and we can talk about that in my in my next thing basically if we see inflation even just peak you're going to see the market react positively because they're going to predict that because inflation's falling the fed isn't going to raise 10 times and you're therefore going to have stocks react instantly yeah right see how that works so you've got a forward looking of six to 12 months the nasdaq is looking very similarly uh although nasdaq is uh is down like 30 percent already 30 percent yeah and smp is down less just 20 percent but right. the nasdaq is already like uh, retesting the structure of the uh autumn 2020 and i think that structure should provide liquidity so right. yeah it's also i think there is a chance for for some kind of a green maybe one green week I wouldn't be surprised right. to see one great week. Right. No guarantee. Yeah. Also, then we have to move to the gold. Gold got hit. Uh, my line got hit. So let's see what happens. Oh, there you even, go. Yeah. Even closed below now uh, dailies, but this was more of a weekly. Right. Let's see what happens. Let's see if there is if there is gonna be now new all-time high for gold yeah not only does does crypto sell off when stocks crash but so does gold right everything sells off in the short term Fair when enough. stocks crash now but then gold goes up and gold re- often will will recover faster yeah. or bounce sure. faster so that definitely could happen so new all-time high in my mind could happen right. us dollar is still going up but yeah it's still going actually up although a little bit slower Look how it double tested your line though at the as support to yeah red, yeah that's yeah. what i yeah that's what i told the last time but then i had a blue line another blue line and it didn't respect it completely so i deleted it and right. if you remember in my in our last podcast i made two last resistances for us dollar and these are the two last resistances so let's hope that fingers crossed that it's gonna reject massively from one of these lines right right let's hope so us dollar that would be for that and is there anything else that we want to cover on a regular um, basis i think that's it for those charts yeah so let's now have a look at what you want to talk about curtis today okay so the the document is what happened so i was, I was working on this and i thought it was um i forget uh, what date was our first video together i think it was january or I February. Think so. I think it yeah. was the end of January. Okay. And so, um, you know, Bitcoin peaked in what, November of last year? Was that the peak? Um, uh, and you had yeah, yeah. high inflation prints towards the end of 2021. So inflation started rising, stocks topped, Bitcoin topped. And mm-hmm. so that's when you and I started doing these videos. So I kind of feel we've come full circle where we've seen the whole uh, cascade of events down where we've brought everything down, including Bitcoin. Um, this week is quite important. And then the question is, will this cycle continue or will we get a reversal of these stages? So I've got these arrows indicating the knock on effect. Um, but uh, so what happened and what might happen It's purely speculation for fun. Um, l- just a reminder to, to your listeners that the Fed has a mandate, right? They have their priority is two things. It's to keep the un- US unemployment rate low and it's simultaneously keeping inflation at a reasonable rate. And so we've had good job growth for a few years, but inflation rate 
became unacceptable. The Fed said we're raising rates and they became more hawkish. Uh, they talked about it for a bit, then they actually did something. Stocks sold off and Bitcoin and altcoins sold off with that. So Bitcoin is seen as a risk, uh, a risky investment. And mm -hmm. so just like previously, there's a high correlation when stocks sell off, crypto sold off. And I make a note here, despite very bullish macro progress, adoption, on-chain data, and actually, if you think about it, inflation should be bullish for Bitcoin, right? Right. Uh, like crypto was created as a hedge against the world economy. So, I mean, uh, logically, if you think about it, it should be inversely correlated, right? Like when the collapse, when the finance is collapsing, then the crypto should be going up. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it hasn't so, happened yet. This, yeah. Uh, uh, Michael Saylor made that point is like, inflation should be good for bitcoin yet it's selling off and that's because of the high correlation uh mm -hmm. with stocks and you say why is that happening now well the story is it used to be that people trading bitcoin were uh younger people uh sort of independent libertarian types and then people trading stocks were legacy bankers goldman sachs guys well, now mm -hmm. it, there's a Venn diagram where both are overlapping. It's the same people that are trading tech stocks and Bitcoin. That's why there's a much higher correlation than previously. Okay. But anyways, this chart shows sort of the knock-on effect. Um, looking back, it looks obvious that this was going to happen, but we didn't know when. We didn't know that this, the Fed was going to finally, well, we didn't know inflation was going to take off this at the end of last year, and we didn't know the Fed was going to raise rates so aggressively. So anyways, that's what happened. Uh, we saw at the bottom there, uh, USD rose, gold did nothing, and JPY weakened, right? Which was a bit of a surprise. But anyone who wants to uh, become an, an analyst, uh, we need to ask the questions um, at the top. Was the extra inflation because of supply chain issues caused during COVID? Or was it a fundamental thing? Um, right? Is, is it, Now that COVID's ending, will inflation come back down? Or did we create... A momentum that the inflation will continue as the world economy opens up right um question number two maybe you can highlight with your cursor is will the stock market crash have a negative wealth effect so the wealth effect is it works both ways when stocks are rising people feel richer they feel wealthier and they spend more money when stocks or assets are going down people feel poorer and they spend less money so will there be a negative wealth effect that puts the U.S. economy or the global economy into a recession? Nobody knows. Uh, next question, do we fall into a recession and have major job losses? So do we create a negative spiral or negative feedback loop that drives us into a recession, uh, causing stocks to fall further and causing crypto to fall further? Uh, next question, will something break? So this is, you saw Luna break, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, if, what if something breaks in the legacy market? So what if there's a real estate crash or a major default, a bank failure, a systemic crash, like an Enron type fraud event discovered? So if something like that happens, we're going to have more downside to stocks and more downside to crypto. Yeah. So what's different? From the COVID 2020 crash and now, I talked about that before. Um, uh, when COVID hit, the Fed was still an ally of stocks, really loose money, and they printed more. And so we had a quick recovery. Now the Fed is the enemy of the stock market. They said we're, we have to cut rates because of inflation. So it's a it's a, a more bearish scenario here compared to COVID, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, let's look at back to 2008. What happened in 2008 is you had a credit freeze, right? You had a fear that banks were insolvent and that therefore you would have sovereign wealth funds uh, collapse, banks collapse, systemic. We're nowhere near that. We're not going to have a credit freeze, okay? Um, the banks are more capitalized. There's lots of liquidity. There's lots of cash moving around. So that's not a concern. So, you know, my humble opinion, we're not as bad as 2008, but we might be a little bit worse than 2020. I'd put it somewhere in the middle there. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, just an opinion. I don't From know the fundamental perspective. Yeah. 
to, we're not we're not going to have a 2008 credit uh, credit freeze at that level, but it could be something like the COVID 2020 without the Fed support, which is uh, scary nonetheless. Okay, right. and then the last one is you know will inflation abate? It means go away, and um, uh -huh. you know um, if inflation starts to fall, the Fed will have an excuse not to do 10 rate hikes, and the market should rally. I think this is the most important chart if anyone wants to make predictions. <laughs> and it's so simple. Okay, it's you can see it's five year, it's the, the monthly inflation rate. At the far right, you can see the 8.26%. That was for April. Sorry, mm -hmm. yeah, it was uh, April, yes. We I think we had 8.5% in March and 8.1% in April, okay? So hopefully that's the peak, right? And why that's important, is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why that's important is if we can see the trend going down, even if it's just slowly, again, mm -hmm. the Fed will have an excuse to not be so hawkish on the, on the, the rate increases, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if inflation goes back up above 9%, the Fed is gonna have no, no uh, ability to 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 loosen right yeah. and the stocks are going to be in trouble and so is crypto so that's the call um if if you can get a, a may inflation rate that's lower than 8.1 percent i think we're, we're going to have it's going to be good to go um, okay. if it goes back up we're in trouble now let's reverse it if monthly inflation peaks there's a decent chance we have hit the bottom of the bear market short to medium term okay so Let's look at the arrows. If monthly inflation peaks, the Fed signals they will now ease rates, meaning not be so aggressive. Stocks recover. We, that confirms the bottom of the bear market. And Bitcoin and altcoins rally. Again, they, they bottom. Uh, at this point, you might see Bitcoin and, and, and alts decouple in the sense that they will outperform. So they will, they, will, they will rise with stocks, but they will rise at maybe 2x the rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is not a prediction, but this is the best case scenario. But we need the inflate the monthly inflation print to go down. And the outperforming of uh, of uh, the stocks by Bitcoin is seen by my chart, which is which is this one. It's Bialik slash speaks chart. So right. yeah, this chart shows like if there is a rally. If there are green candles, it means that Bitcoin is outperforming stocks and the red, it means it's staying behind. And okay. yeah, we talked a couple of times about this chart and why this chart I think is very important. And one, uh, one reason is that it, during the last uh, May's crash, we crashed, we, we, we touched pinpointly accurately the top from 2017. So that's why I believe that this chart has a significant value and is worth to be looking at. So it looks like it's been outperforming stocks the entire time though, right? It's going rather like, sideways for a year now. Right. It's going kind of a sideways. Well, right. yeah, but uh, last, the second half of this year, however, yeah. it was not as much outperforming the stocks as it was in the first half of the year because there was okay. new, there was no, there was no new, all time high right so, okay so yeah so that's the best case scenario again watch for the may june july inflation prints um and hopefully they're down and that the inflation is not as bad as as they thought what you'll probably see is the fed uh not raise 10 times but again the market will predict that early they'll anticipate that and stocks will rally sooner rather than later mm-hmm and I think that's the only thing keeping Bitcoin and crypto down is, is the stocks and that, that bearishness, right? Um, otherwise, I think it's a very bullish macro event uh, environment for, for Bitcoin and, and crypto generally. I also think so. I think that this crisis is going to actually help crypto in the long run tremendously. Mm. I think because okay. all the and innovation... Then, yeah. All innovations, right. I think, are going to be uh, massively appreciated thanks to this crisis. Right. Because the crisis usually, the innovation usually uh, brings solutions. Right. To I will say, though, the Luna thing is, is an absolute nightmare 
for DeFi, right? As well, it's not just stable coins, right? That are going to be hurt because mm -hmm. um, how do you trust a DeFi project if you're not sure you're going to get your money back? Like if I'm lending to, to a DeFi project, maybe I'm getting 12% a year. Let's say I'm using Matic or I'm using Cardano. I'm getting 10%, 12%. That sounds mm -hmm. great, right? But what if there's a, another 5% chance that the, I don't get my money back at all? Is it worth it? Well, first of all, you should be watching out if there is a stable coin that offers you 20% yeah, APY right. like UST yeah. used to. This is something that I was even talking, I'm not sure if in the podcast or in the videos, but to the other people from, you know, other investors, a couple of months ago, like this UST thing, like if, if something that is stable or meant to be stable is giving you 20%, that is bad news. And one yeah. thing I also spoke of, uh, uh, what I realized was that they were doing abracadabra, quote unquote, mechanism. I'm not sure if it was on Anchor or where exactly, but UST was leveraging against itself to be able as well to, to offer this 20%. And then yeah, there the was this Ponzi scheme. That's what Ponzi and scheme does. There was this fund that was depleting, which was also used for paying 20% rewards. That was everybody knew it will deplete at some point and then the, AP, the uh, APY will be decreased. But of right. course, nobody really thought that it would come to the worst, like complete the right. worst of the worst. And also so this cover is, this with Bitcoin, yeah. another, in my opinion, bad idea. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, yeah right. The Luna Guard, did they call it? They wanted to back the, you know, the UST pack by Bitcoin. So they bought right. of Bitcoin. That was a bad yeah, idea right. as well. I didn't right. like that from start. Right. It seems circular. Yeah. But I'm against okay. Bukele, I'm against Tyler, so I don't like anybody who is buying a lot of it. Right. If you have any questions, I wanted to talk about Tesla and Teladoc yeah, quickly. Yeah, sure, let's go. Time. Let's go there. Um, so, um, you know, assuming we do have a scenario where stock markets bottom and crypto mm -hmm. bottoms, mm -hmm. my opinion, not financial advice, is to, to be buying crypto and buying stocks like tesla for sure can um, i have a look at the stock price so yeah look at the stock price um because i made a line there uh, yeah this so my, we, this would be yeah, my buy line for, for it's never going to go there well okay let's okay. see let's see let's uh, see let's see Chris. let's uh yeah that's i think that's a bridge too far i mean it could go lower if uh obviously we get another crash um, I guess everything's on the table, but I'm um, pretty sure this will happen. I'm pretty sure. And this mean, one, I'm not sure, but this would be as well my buy. Yeah. Okay. I, under what scenarios? Yeah. So um, let's look at the chart then. Let's look at um, Tesla. The It's got the price to sales and it's got the PE. Okay. Uh, Tesla. You just there had you it the there one before. Go. This one. Okay. So the top is the stock price. You can say it's it's sold off. Um, you've got net earnings per share. So you've got revenue or you've got earnings uh, rising exponentially and consistently. Uh, you can see up to 2020, they did not make any money. And then they've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight quarters of profit. And we doubled profit last year. So you have a 80% revenue rise mm -hmm. in one year. Look at the PE ratio. Okay, everyone at the okay. very bottom, look at the PE. Everyone said, okay, Tesla's great, but it's way overvalued. The PE is out of control. And at some point, mm -hmm. I think the PA was like a thousand, which is crazy, right? For yeah. context, you know, Google is 20, a PE of 20 to one, right? 20. And it was uh, Tesla was a thousand, but look at it now. Look at the most recent. It's like at a hundred. Look at the far right little bubble. Yeah. Uh, can, can you uh, highlight it at the very far right? The next to the two. Yeah. So we're now down to the lowest PE since it became profitable, right? Uh, the PE is about a hundred or hundred and four. Now, why is it falling so fast? Because revenue is climbing exponentially, and it's price earnings, right? The price is falling and revenue is rising. So when you have a PE of let's say 200, but your revenue doubles, 
on a year to year basis, you cut the PE in half. It goes from 200 to 100. And if you double revenue again, it goes from 100 to 50 and 50 to 25. So very rapidly, your PE will fall if your revenues are growing exponentially. And it's, it's um, pretty much clear that uh, Tesla's revenues are going to keep growing at this rate. Um, the number of cars, I think they'll do uh, 1.5 million cars this year sold, even despite uh, the corona setbacks. So mm -hmm. revenue is skyrocketing. The PE is going to be, well, either the price is going to recover or the PE is going to fall extremely low. It's going to be extremely cheap. It's very cheap right now. That's why I, was, I really doubted the, the $400 or $178 calls. Astronomical growth, revenue, profitability, sales. So they're up 80% year over year on wow. revenue. <laughs> okay. okay. And look at the years before. So every, so 2018, they were up 14%. 2019, they jumped 28%. 2020, they jumped 70%. So it's, it's an exponential story, David. And um, PE is going to, Either, again, either price is going to rise with it, which is likely what's going to happen, but um, the PE will get extremely attractive in either case, right? Um, and uh, it's set to continue. I think they're going to do 1.5 million cars this year. Uh, by 2030, they may have, be selling 15 to 20 million cars. And that's just the car business, right? It's nothing to do with the battery business, the insurance business, mm -hmm. auto, uh, full cell uh, uh, autonomous driving. So... Um, uh, could it go lower? Yes, but it's, I think it's one of the best buys in the stock market right now. Okay. You want to talk about, uh, T doc as well, a little bit. Yeah. Teladoc just for uh, 60 seconds. Um, yeah. so Teladoc is, um, again, uh, it's a medical it's, you know, they say it's, it's zoom for doctors, uh, but it's medical services through, uh, you know, remote access technology, but you can see the stock price is sold off greatly, even though sales are fairly strong. Look at the sales. They, they're relatively strong. Still the middle graph, um, mm -hmm. not quite an all time high, but uh, you can see that's strong. And then look at price to sales. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have a PE because they all don't make any long. money yet. Right. So you can't measure PE if you're not profitable. Right. Yeah. But what you can measure is price to sales. So it's the uh, all time low. Yeah, all time low while they're growing. Yeah, it's 90% down at the moment. 90% down. And then look at the revenue growing, right? So they're not profitable yet, but when they do get profitable, I think you see you see a boom. Don't try to catch the falling knife. You taught me there what you it go. means the last good. time. You there taught you me what it means. <laughs> and right yeah i would as for me where i would be catching the falling knife for tesla would definitely be this line yeah and but what is yeah, but boy but the thing is it's not going to go there maybe what if it doesn't go there i mean then you, you just put, don't buy then you just look yeah. for something else or be patient if you're impatient you're going to lose money impatience yeah. loses the money the most i think yes i know but um but if it's a good stock um and it's going to be going up three to five x in the next few years, you don't want to be too focused on the technicals. But I guess you you may not agree with me about Tesla, which is totally fine. If you if you if you don't think it's got a great potential, I do um, think so. I do think it does. Yeah. So, but the, I also it won't think... matter whether you bought it at four hundred or six hundred if it's at five thousand, right? I think it has the potential. Although I also think that if something has uh, outperformed everything in the market over the past five years or 10 years, if, if it that did something exponential, there's always going to be majority talking about how great a uh, stock it is and how, how many more access is going to make. It's always yeah. going to happen if something outperforms everything. So I also think uh, yeah. that at the same time. And so That's you don't just, you actually do your own research and you look at it. And of, of course you don't know you're right for sure. Um, if Elon Musk died, uh, I think the stock could sell off massively. Um, other than that, there's not a lot in their way, in my opinion, uh, but that's a, that's a tail risk. Mm -hmm. um, um, just like crypto, right? Uh, with Bitcoin, I'm very bullish, but I definitely there are some, some events that could, could, uh, could crash it. Um, so 
Yeah, you have to make a decision at some point. Um, yeah, I sure. don't think it's hype, though. Tesla's not hype. I think the enthusiasm you're seeing is because their their growth rate is so amazing, right? And not only that is they're now they're they're growing plus they're profitable. And that, the profitability was missing up until 2020. That's as true. soon as they showed. Point. Yeah, that's why it was flat for five years, right? It was mm -hmm. it was or 10 years. And people thought it was going to default. Yes. Yeah. But there was a lot. But look, when did it start? 2003, 2001? When 2000 did Tesla start? Tesla started like the, the stock is there from 2010. Sorry, 2010. So you had 10 years of it kind of just, you know, finding its feet and it was losing, was spending money. And then suddenly it breaks off, takes off. But it's every single criticism has been proven wrong, right? They won't sell a lot of cars or they can't okay. sell cars and be profitable. Um, okay, asking so, myself the question that what if it never goes there and it's going to go make, you know, I'm going to miss out on free more access, that means succumbing to FOMO. Uh, well, no, because you could say it's very good value now. Okay. Uh, if, if, if we were at a peak now, I would say, yeah, maybe don't buy it at the peak, but we've already sold off. I mean, we're sold off, what, 20%, 25% off the highs? What was the high? 1,200 down to yeah, six. Yeah, 1,200. And it went, how was the low of that red whip there? Okay, I'm gonna make a mark very well today and we're gonna be watching the price for sure. And let's yeah. see. See, I think it's cheap now. Maybe that's the difference between you and I. I think it's that's already- the difference. Yes, that's yeah. the difference. Um, and also I would be patient to ride it out, but look at the PE. It, again, it's come down massively. It was a thousand uh, just a few weeks ago, or not a few weeks ago, a few months ago. The PE ratio was, a, was super high. Look at that peak. Oh, that might've been 2021. The PE ratio was mm -hmm. a thousand or 1200 or something. And now it's a hundred. So it's 10%, right? Okay. So I'm afraid we're going to have to move on uh, because I would like to cover one, uh, well, yeah, very shortly please. an altcoin. And then we have to wrap up. The time is coming to an end. Uh, so, uh, yeah, for my altcoin pick, because every at the end of every podcast, I choose to talk a little bit about an, alt, an altcoin, I would like to come back to Luxo because my call, my bullish call for Luxo is, has gotten wrecked. It's, it was a wrong call and that call was on Ethereum contract. The call was that we are not going down, we are rather going up. Uh, if I had to look back again, I don't think that call was like so bad or so wrong, even though it, you know, it, it, it got wrecked. But uh, the chart is still looking like pretty in a macro perspective, but versus Ethereum and of course on a USDT chart, uh, USDT contract even more so. It looks yeah, everything's uh, selling off, right? So even it if it's a great coin, well. yeah. But this is versus Ethereum. So and I thought after the announcement that uh, the merge is delayed again, I really thought that uh, right. things like Luxo will perform. And the the most uh, absolutely shocking thing for me is to see that Luxo has been for like nine months, like ever since August. He's been holding ten dollars like a champ. Always came to ten dollars yeah. and always bounced. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a few days ago, it just straight well, look, died it's seven down. Weeks. Completely like died. Absolutely, completely died. Fifty percent in a few days, just easy peasy. From the level that has been held for nine months, that's just really. It was a shocker. But isn't that just because it got caught up with all the crypto selling off, like everything? Yes, else? it does. Yes, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I also think. There is, I don't think there is nothing, anything wrong with development at the moment. Uh, um, and I think that the whales that just dumped it all and just left here, I think that they just knew that everything is now gonna crash. And I think they will be back. Although, if they sell like this, this is just major whales massively leaving Luxo. If they sell like this, it doesn't. It means also that they are not gonna come back like the next week or the next month. So I think ten dollars now it's resistance for some time. Although, yeah, as, as you just mentioned, uh, it's going to like the money will come back there like ahead of time as well. So <laughs> like uh, now it's leaving ahead of time, and it's gonna come back ahead of time as well.
like sooner right. than can you give me an elevator pitch on on luxo can you give me like four or five sentences of what makes it interesting for you as a coin so uh you know about the developers of ethereum and the great eight of ethereum <laughs> i don't i don't know that there were like eight uh, co-founders of ethereum right okay and no uh fabian Fogelsteller was not one of them i always butcher his name i was just so sorry but he was working on ethereum and he was also like in the company of the uh, ethereum uh, grade 8 as well and he was usually the quiet one who was doing uh, like uh, the work there <laughs> so, okay. and he is yeah he started doing luxo then he left ethereum uh 2018 or so he started doing luxo and he in by his time in ethereum he created erc20 uh the standard it was his creation okay interesting and uh he's doing this project with the marjorie hernandez who is a, i think designer fashion designer i think uh and they are fully focused this layer one is fully focused on digital identity and uh as well digital fashion identity of the digital item or even physical item that will also coexist on blockchain through chips there's lots of interesting concepts and on the identity focus there is no other layer one yeah i mean with v chain i know i heard that there is partially as well but uh there is not that much focus on that and i think it is uh it is very important market to cover as well with the metaverse fast fast you know evolutions like digital items will just need their identity and the, the right. luxo will offer the perfect infrastructure for that will and it provide also... um will it provide for individuals identity as well like could i become a yeah a well avatar that. And that uh, seems to be yes. a bigger use case, right? I mean, that too. Wouldn't that I mean, be a home run? I mean, that's what yep. people want. I think so. And also, is approaching some key milestones of the roadmap. So it's just a shocker to me that how many of the whales like just whew, like this was like I I have not seen dumping lacks of work sometime now. Anyway, yeah. So sorry about the Ethereum on the Ethereum contract call. So it has gotten. On Ethereum contract, Luxo now works. Uh, Luxo now looks significantly worse. Is it L Y X E? It's L Y X and then E because it's still the token is ERC twenty because they are not on mainnet yet. But the mainnet is is not far away. Once it's out, there is gonna be leaks tokens. The L -Y -X. market cap is only eighty seven million dollars. <laughs> and that as cap. well. And that's exactly yeah. That's also my point. That yeah, if, huge uh, upside if it. I mean, just to one uh, billion, you've got a, you know, you've got a ten x to one billion. Yeah, and only few whales can put it to one billion in few right. weeks. You know. Right. This is this happens all the time. So again, are all these altcoins? You want to see that they actually create something I can feel and touch, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like I want to see the product. I want to use the product or the app. I want it. I want, and then I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. You know what I mean? I'll buy the coin or I'll, I'll, I'll you know, but I want to see, I want to see it. I want to use it. Do they have something I can like, what value does it bring to me right now? Can I, can I yes, set that's up true. A, right uh, at the can moment? I, well, right now, nothing because it's not even okay. on mainnet yet, but okay. that's exactly the thing. The market is pricing in to the future. So like right. the mainnet is going to be priced in even before it's released. You see, you follow me. I just want to see something oh, no, I can sure. actually, actually, you, you, you know, do <laughs> use. <laughs> like if I'm not into NFTs, exactly what am I using these things for? I, I'd, I'd like to, but uh, I'd like to see the products coming. Yeah, I, I follow you. Although the products will be priced in before they come out. <laughs> that's, yes, absolutely. That's the pickle. That's the pickle, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, uh, the, the, lot, the biggest price of them is going to be before they come out. And then... Yeah. When they start picking up adoption, only then they, the price will recover. But usually the prices are uh, higher just before the complete completion. Right. Okay, right. it's time to wrap this up. Uh, we are almost, almost like uh, fully, <laughs> like soon my uh, my Zoom will shut up, shut down. Okay. So uh, thank you very much, Curtis. Uh, the next time, uh, maybe we could still schedule like two weeks ahead. Although if there is like so like so much happening 
Maybe yeah. you will call me again, like, okay, let's do it today. It's yeah. Like, so much yeah, to this week's going to be interesting. Even today is going to be super interesting what happens. Yeah, this week is going to be interesting and the next week even more so. And with the leverage on the market, the volatility is going to remain. The volatility is going to remain, guys. I'm just, I'm sorry to say. So uh, we will meet in roughly two weeks. And until that time, uh, have a, stay safe. Don't buy USD, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe and uh, we'll see. Thanks, David. We'll see you again. Thank you, Curtis.